Well, how about that, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long minute, hadn't it? So I'm gonna make a series of videos now that is gonna show, uh, it's gonna explain what I've done to finish this system. And my friend's system also, we've both been off grid for months now. And I haven't been making the videos. I've been busy doing other things, but I wanna show you a, a series of videos. And in this first one, we're gonna talk about this. I have uh, doubled the capacity. Originally, I had these solar panels across, and that was 12,000 watts of solar that was installed nine years ago. And I since added these three rows, which equals uh, 10,870 watts. Now, these panels, these, these lower panels that I added, these were rescues. They came from a house that had severe hail damage, and these were the panels that didn't get broken. And just happened to be the right number. I've got 11 panels in three courses. So there's 33 panels, and these were uh, 330 watt panels. And I want to show you how I added them on and what it took to do that and how I'm using them. So the original system was mounted on this steel structure that sits on top of my rainwater tank. And it ended here. And what I did was I took the same steel tubing and I added it, added pieces on that extended it on down and this piece of steel tubing right here, that's the support leg, and there's four of those. Uh, those go into a 900 pound chunk of concrete that I poured in the ground that uh, I dug down to solid rock. Originally, this rainwater tank was built into the hillside and I put brought dirt in up against the rainwater tank and I didn't want to uh, set this on top of that. I drew, I dug down, augered down with my tractor, down to the original bedrock. And these are 900 pound, pounds of poured concrete that I put in with a steel cage. And then I used the same Iron Ridge uh, support rails and put all these in, I put it all in myself. Before we go over to the other side to show you a little more about this, these are 28 additional panels that came off of another, I did a video about these panels at one point, they came off of another project that had sustained hail damage. And they're sitting there for the future, just in case, we end up with um, hail damage on these. We can pull these panels that are broken off and put those up if we needed to. Coming around to this side, you'll see a little bit better view of how we did this, how I did this. This blue poly is uh, 25 mils heavy poly. I put that in there just to keep the grass from growing up close to the panels. And I'll probably put some gravel over it later. Uh, and I'll probably do some, I'll probably do some spraying of pre-emergent back in underneath here, just to keep from having to get underneath the solar panels and mow. <clears throat> I ran these as six circuits, three circuits of five panels and three circuits of six panels. I ran all the wiring in and brought it all up here. And you can see here, I've got six pairs of negative and positive uh, PV wires. And then they run through this conduit and then into the building there. Let's see if I can 
you know, they turn and go into the building there. And I ran them into the inverters inside in, uh, into six different inputs. Now they could have run into uh, three pairs instead of six individuals, instead of six individual MPPTs. But uh, for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. And if this system were to ever get expanded, I could just bring like here, looks like there might be room for an expansion if I wanted. The expansion would just be brought over here and I could run those wires in the same way through, through a similar conduit. And when I got to the inverters inside, I could uh, share the, the MPPTs with these because there's capacity, there's plenty of capacity on those inverters inside. Um, so you might wonder why I need all this capacity. This is twice as much solar as it takes to make this house net zero. Now this is a big house. This is a 4,000 square foot house. It's built uh, with an energy efficient building system, but I also, you know, have the koi pond over there that, uh, that by itself uses 10 kilowatt hours a day. So on any given day, this system produces two or three times as much power as it needs, as this house needs. Today is a sunny day all day long. This system all together here in uh, February is still going to produce about 130 kilowatt hours of power. And I'm going to need about half, about one fourth of that to run the house. So what's going to happen is these panels are run in as DC coupled straight into the inverters. Um, and so those are going into, the, into my inverters and, and supplying the house. This original setup, those are AC coupled. And those are feeding into the grid under the original agreement with the power company to accept that power. So on sunny days, uh, I can, or partly sunny days, I can feed that into the grid and I can run everything off of this. And so the power company owes me money now and will continue to owe me more and more money as time goes by. It covers my access fee, the, the, the connection charge, and builds up a credit. I don't ever take any power out of the grid, but I do put power into the grid. And the usefulness of this is we've gone through some very cold, for us, very cold temperatures this year. We got 17 degree nights, 15 degree nights, and that's Fahrenheit. Um, so that's like, you know, minus 10 Celsius in that range. And cloudy days and heating with electric runs the batteries down pretty good. Um, I can, without, with heavily cloudy days and cold temperatures, I can get through about five days with this much solar keeping me going during the, uh, during those cloudy days, I feed all of this into the, into the system and feeding all of this into the system on a cloudy day will produce, you know, depends on how dark the clouds are. Maybe it's going to produce 15 kilowatt hours. Maybe it's going to produce 30 kilowatt hours. And maybe I'm burning 40 or 50 kilowatt hours running the, the heating system. And so that's going to, knock the batteries down a little each day, each day, each day, it's gonna knock the batteries down. But by the time you end up with five days of cold weather, somewhere in there in this climate, you're gonna have some sunny days. And they're gonna be sunny cold days, 
So that means you produce a lot of power because the panels are cool. And so usually when we get those really cold temperatures like that, it'll be because a cold front came through, cleared the clouds out, and the next day it's super cold, but it's sunny and the batteries get charged up. On cloudy days, we typically are more in the 30 degree range, right around zero Celsius range. And so all winter long, I've been able to stay off grid through long periods of cold weather, long periods of cloudy weather, but we haven't had any long periods of cold and cloudy weather beyond five days. And five days put me down to where I only had, uh, I think it was 13% left. And that next morning, uh, the sun came out and started charging me back up. It was cold, but it started charging me back up. And then once the batteries get started, get, get up close to full, then, and depending on what the forecast is for the future, then I just switch over that original 12,000 watts and feed that into the grid. So it's working really well for me. Now, I've got more videos coming up. I'm, I'm gonna start making more videos because I've got more stuff coming up in my future that's gonna keep me occupied. So I wanna get this taken care of. I've, I've been owing it to you for some time now. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button or a notification bell so that the next videos that are gonna come up uh, one after another now, you'll get to see them all. Thank you very much. I appreciate you clicking on us and sticking with us this long. Have a good day.